my name is Nairi. I'm running an adoption support channel. I've got two adopted sons. Today we're going to talk about fears and phobias. I'm going to talk about things that I've experienced with foster children and adopted children, help you to explore some of those fears and phobias and what you can maybe do about it, how you could kind of try to eradicate them. So because I've been a foster carer and an adopter, I've come across different children and they've come from different traumatised backgrounds. Um, fears and phobias is something that comes up time and time again. So some of the common things that I've come across are spiders, that's come up time and time again, and bugs and creepy crawlies. And also water is, has been a, a big one, especially around children that have been sexually abused. It can come at you from all angles. It can be really unexpected. So you could be out having a great time and all of a sudden somebody starts panicking and you don't really know why. And that's generally fear, a fear or phobia. Some of the abusive history, there were maybe threats of things that were creepy crawly toward the children to emotionally abuse them and that's why spiders and bugs feature so so greatly with two children and another one is water and having water over your face or near your face and all, almost like the suffocating feeling of water has been a big one too and I think the thing is about fears and phobias as when the child is experiencing that trigger that's taking them back into that history you've got to find a way of bringing them into the present and reminding them that you're not the abuser, you're the trusted adult. If you've got children that are experiencing lots of fears and phobias, if you can get hold of therapy, that's gonna be really important for them. But sometimes that's not possible and sometimes you're the only person that can help them. So let's take water, for example. Lots of children don't like water on their face, on their hair. And I'm not sort of talking about when they're toddlers and they just don't want their hair washed. I'm talking about like when they're older and you know that this is an unrealistic reaction to the water. And bath time can also be a trigger for children who've been sexually abused, especially. For two of the children that I've had, bath time was very difficult to start with. Um, definitely couldn't have my husband around, so would have to be in the room with them and keep my distance and then gradually build up that trust. And I think around water and bath time, that's, that's a big one for some children. First of all, you might want to detach the hair washing from the bath time experience so that the children really start enjoying the bath time experience. And every night, you know, give them a really lovely routine for the bath. Give them lots of nice toys, special bubble bath, stuff that's just for them that makes them feel really, really special around bath time. And when it comes to washing the hair, maybe start off by using a damp flannel, which is going to be a special flannel of some sort that means something to them and say to them that they are in control of, of getting their face and hair wet. So you kind of damp that flannel, say, could you wash your face really gently? And could you get your hair nice and wet for me so I can just put a little bit of soap in and we'll do this together and just build that up. And importantly, of course, as well, is like thinking about pace, which there's a link there, up there for my pace video thinking about being curious about why the water is causing them so many issues. For some children I've known that they've actually been submerged underwater and held there. For others I know that the wetness is around sexual abuse and I know that's horrible, it's not nice to have to say that on camera but that's the reality and some of the situations that have happened with them you're going to need to be curious and say I think the reason why this might be happening is because you've mentioned this to me before and children will normally tell you if you're on the right track or if you're wrong so kind of like you use your therapeutic parenting to help them through that process fears and phobias can be massive particularly at night time and this is what can give children nightmares um, but that's a whole that's a whole different video so i hope this helps you to kind of think about the way that you might move forward with your adopted children if it does, please take the time to subscribe to Adoption with Nairi and you will find lots of playlists on different subjects that I know will help you in your life of adoption. Thank you for listening.